How mental health during the pandemic has affected the local Humane Society. How a new policy for KU will affect student fees. How the Vice President Live today will look from after the, the President at the positive of for COVID-19. Live from the studios at the University of Kansas, you are watching KUJH-TV News. Welcome to KUJH. I'm Carly Newcomb. And I'm Courtney McMaster. Coronavirus has taken a toll on every area of our lives. We've adjusted to wearing masks and social distancing, but the effects you can't see may be the hardest to overcome. Carly got to see firsthand what this looks like. Yes, well, mental health concerns have skyrocketed as we fight the war against coronavirus. But I got to meet some people who may have found a solution to bring joy. Half of Americans have reported that they are in an emotional crisis. Animal shelters were empty while we sheltered in place because the people were rushing to adopt animals at the beginning of the pandemic. Six months later, and people are still turning to animals for support. Meet Cookie and her brother Fitz. Nine-week-old kittens that have been enjoying their temporary home while being fostered. Fostering allows you to care for animals for a short period of time while they wait for their forever homes. Cindy Corser, their owner, says that having them brings so much joy to her day. I think if I did not have them to take care of, I would have been in bed probably all day, all hours of the day. So with the cats, it definitely gives me reason to wake up in the morning, get out of bed, and take care of something. And if you're more of a dog person, no worries. Meet Odie, a one-year-old shelter dog who is being fostered. He loves to play, go on walks, and snuggle. He's just been like a way for us to like outlet and be able to have fun. And like he comes and gives us cuddles all the time. And of course, like that's gonna bring up your mental health and like help you during like such a hard and unprecedented time. Odin, come here, come on. Down, sit. Can you sit again? Good boy! Good boy! And Odie is definitely a good boy. In Lawrence, Carly Newcomb, KUJH News. Watkins Memorial Health Center provides students with psychological therapy and COVID-19 testing. Half of its $9 million budget is funded by the Student Senate through an annual student health fee. The other half comes from out-of-pocket costs and deductibles, which impact students without health insurance. The Senate proposed a plan called Watkins for All, which could potentially raise the student health fee by $70 to take the burden off of students' pockets. Uh, and yeah, I think that a $70 um, increase on tuition would be very beneficial for everyone. I mean, it makes it easier for, I mean, because, I mean, students may need to tell me, especially during COVID, like, I feel like Watkins is helpful. Like, I don't think, like, I mean, I think it, we need to have insurance, but I, I feel like it's just easier. I guess I've never had to go to walk into the main thing, though, like, because it's free, like, when you just go check out. I believe that an increase in tuition among students at KU would probably be um, beneficial for those who don't have health insurance to help them out because those who are less fortunate deserve to have medical care as well as those who are fortunate to. The Student Senate also identified several main weaknesses in the current campus health care system, such as insufficient health care and lack of health insurance. The program aims to address these issues, but as of now, it is in its early planning and discussion phase when it was announced during an open Senate meeting last week. More information will be announced when further details are finalized. Tonight at 8, Mike Pence and Kamala Harris are going head-to-head -head in the vice presidential debate. The two administrations were at odds with each other over whether the debate should increase their health precautions after multiple members of the Trump administration, including Trump himself, tested positive for COVID-19. Pence tested negative for the virus and believed added health precautions would be unnecessary, but the Harris team thought a physical barrier between them would be the best option. In the end, they agreed to having plexiglass barrier between them during the debate. Speaking of the election, KUJH is doing a special show on election night. Tune in for coverage about updates and results coming in when several, with several special guests. Yes, well, are you, are you registered to vote for Yes, I registered this week. What about you? Yes, I am as well, so it should be a good night. We will be covering it like Courtney said. Yes, and when we come back, a sad end to a search for a former KU athlete. <laughs>
Welcome back. I'm Danita Victor. Just this afternoon, KUJH got news of the death of former track athlete Ben Brownlee. Emily Johnson has more on the story. Former KU track and field and cross country athlete Ben Brownlee was found deceased after a two day search in the San Juan Mountains near Lake City, Colorado on Tuesday. He was 26. Brownlee was reported missing Sunday after failing to return from a solo hiking trip. Emergency managers said that Brownlee was an experienced and avid hiker who had been last seen by a fellow hiker on Saturday morning. He was descending an unnamed peak. His general itinerary was to hike 13,000 foot peaks in the Lake City area. Brownlee was found about 75 to 100 feet below a steep rocky ridge southeast of Cooper Creek Peak. Recovery of his body will begin Wednesday. Kansas Athletics mourns the loss of Brownlee. Head coach Stanley Redwine said in a statement, Ben was a valued member of our team. My prayers are with his family, teammates, and friends. We will miss his smile and great personality. During his time at KU, Brownlee earned an academic all-conference honors in track and field and cross country. That was Emily Johnson reporting for KUJH. Our deepest condolences go to the Brownlee family. In other sports news, Kansas fo football once again fails to claim a win. The Jayhawks face Oklahoma State Cowboys and quickly fell behind. OK State's offense took over and Kansas falls 47-7. to Despite the tough loss, Coach Les Miles says that he sees the light for his team. They want to win, they're competitive, um, and, and I'm going to believe in them. And uh, that's, that's my choice, and I think it's the right thing to do. The Jayhawks will have a bye week and then travel to West Virginia October 17th. Kansas soccer continues to keep their winning streak. The ladies took on Kansas State in the Sunflower Showdown Friday night. Senior Maddie Dugan found the net in the second half, securing the win 1-0. The Jayhawks will travel to Waco, Texas to face Baylor on Friday. And inside the NBA bubble, the LA Lakers took on the Miami Heat in Game 4 of the Finals. The Lakers held on to their series lead, LeBron James, with 28 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. It was Contavious Caldwell Pope who stepped out for LA with two back-to-back -back buckets in the fourth for a seven-point lead. The Lakers win 102 to 96 and are up 3-1 in the series. And Monday night, the undefeated Chiefs proved to the Patriots that they cannot be stopped. New England played without starting quarterback Cam Newton after testing positive for COVID-19. Patrick Mahomes threw 236 yards and had two touchdowns. In the fourth, Tyron Matthew catches a tip pass and brings in the win for the Chiefs 26 to 10. After the break, we will see a look at the recent opening that is now a closing again. Stay Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Lawrence's only movie theater, Regal Southwind, will be closing again tomorrow, just two months after its reopening. It's part of a nationwide shutdown of the Regal Theater chain due to economic difficulty from the COVID-19 pandemic. All 536 of its locations will be temporarily closing their doors. Regal is the second largest chain in the U.S., following AMC Theaters. About 40,000 employees across the U.S. are now facing a work furlough. Some customers are unhappy about its closing. We're already bummed out with the COVID and everything else, and there's only so few places that people can go to distract themselves from their regular day-to-day -day activities. And now that we're heading into, you know, the Halloween, the Thanksgiving, it's only the colder months where people are stuck at home. And uh, unless you have Netflix, you're <laughs> not going to be happy. While the company did not name a date for reopening of business, customers are hopeful for a return soon. But for now, it looks like we'll have to stick to watching movies at home. For KUJH, this has been McKenna Patchen. I'm Marcella Reeder, and welcome back to Entertainment. In recent Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, he sat down with Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown. Brown brought up that she almost quit acting after a lost lane role in Game of Thrones. The 16-year-old said, quote, this industry is just full of rejection 24-7. Yeah. You get far more no's, a lot more no's, before you get a yes. I'm glad she kept fighting because, let's be honest, Stranger Things would not be the same without her. Recent news of rock star Eddie Van Halen is gripping Van Halen's fans nationwide. 
He died at the age of 65 yesterday oh. after fighting throat cancer for over a decade. Van Halen was reportedly in and out of the hospital over the past year, and his health for the last 72 hours, guys, was rapidly declining. Van Halen's son, Wolfgang, took to Twitter writing, he was the best father I could have ever asked for. Every moment I shared with him on and off the stage was a gift. I love you so much, Pop. And for me, my dad, he used to work as a stage manager and actually had breakfast with him. So this is a really big loss for everyone nationwide. Last but not least, Netflix will be releasing Selena the series in December. The actress playing our beloved Selena is Christian Serratos. If you recognize her, you might know her from her role in the Walking Dead series. And wow, the resemblance is spot on. That's a look at entertainment today. Looks like this weekend is going to be one for outside instead of Netflix binging. Let's go for Another hot day in Lawrence, probably the hottest day of the week. And that's going to continue throughout the week, but it's not going to feel as bad as it sounds because that dry conditions are going to make it feel a lot cooler than it would be if the humidity was a little bit higher. Taking a look at the satellite imagery, you can see there's really no clouds in the sky over Lawrence right now, but you can see some smoke off into the distance, and those are from the wildfires happening in California. And luckily, it's going to be up in the upper atmosphere, so it's not going to affect the air quality. Taking a look outside, it is 90 degrees, sunny, crazy for October, um, but there is a little bit of wind coming from the southwest at 7 miles per hour. Looking at your evening forecast, at around dinner time, it's going to be 86 degrees. It's going to get down to 63 around midnight. And then our low for the evening is 59 degrees. It's going to stay pretty clear with a little bit of wind from the east southeast. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit cooler than today, but still very warm. Don't put away your summer clothes just yet. Lots of sunshine with a little bit of wind coming from the south southeast. Game day on Sunday, Chiefs play the Las Vegas Raiders at 12 o'clock. Um, it's going to be around 76 degrees for kickoff, and then by the fourth quarter, it'll be 78. So beautiful weather for game day, whether you're watching in Lawrence or at Arrowhead Stadium. And hurricane season isn't over just yet. We've already used all the names in our alphabet, so now we're into the Greek alphabet. Uh, so this is Hurricane Delta. It made landfall in East Mexico this morning as a Category 2, and it's going to continue to build as it reaches um, the Gulf Coast. And so that's going to happen around 7 p.m. on Friday evening when it makes landfall. Beautiful weekend ahead of us, though. 81 on Saturday, 58 Saturday night, and then another warm day on Sunday. Well, we have a beautiful week ahead of us. It's going to get a little cooler every single day this week, but that's all we have for the weather today. Stay tuned to hear more about voter registration. Welcome back. In many states, voter registration has closed and people have already began to cast their ballots. The 2020 election, election is, is already, already underway, underway in some states. states. South, Carolina South Carolina and five, and five other, other states, states have started in advance in person, person voting, voting started on Monday. With the election being less, than, election a month being away, less than a month away, many are casting their votes now to avoid long lines later on. That being said, in places is like there? Richland County, lines are already long. Some people had to wait three hours to get their vote in. A major reason for longer wait times this early in the election is due to the ongoing pandemic. Safety is the number one priority for polling locations. Going eight people in at a time, um, you know, to maintain social distancing and, you know, make sure that everyone is safe. Um, but we have the workers getting the voters in and out as quickly as possible. The deadline to register to vote for the state of Kansas is October 13th. In person, early voting begins on October 14th and it ends on November 2nd. The deadline to request a mail ballot is October 27th. Douglas County has yet to provide information as to how safety measures regarding COVID-19 will be maintained at election. 
Yeah, and so speaking of voting, we saw um, quite the interesting statue on Tennessee Street this week. Yes, I was just driving by and it was definitely a head turner. Um, but as you can see, it's a Grim Reaper and he's holding a sign that says vote. Yeah, very fits in good with spooky season and the election year. Yeah. Yes, yes. You know, people may be scared of voting, which I don't know if this helps, but it should persuade you to vote. <laughs> We'll leave you with that scary video, but that's all for KUJH Wednesday, October 7th. Tune in next week at 4 p.m. for the latest in news, entertainment, and sports. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.